I don't know about you, but for me, that sound was what preceded the best that entertainment had to offer, period, when I was a kid. Imagine it's 2001, you're seven years old, you're fortunate enough to have a game console at home, but you're not exactly swimming in new stuff to play. You know, you're making do with what you got, you don't even really know what you're missing, and on the other hand, you're also just having fun doing the same cop chase over and over again in Driver. And you're definitely not getting past the tutorial level, it's well known that that's impossible. Maybe I'll give you a call when I need a ride to the grocery store. Anyway, this was me. Not a lot to play, but enough games to keep me entertained for sure. I was also lucky enough to have games at home that were real winners. The aforementioned Driver, Crash, Spyro, Tomb Raider. There really weren't any stinkers in the stack of games that were available to me. I also had Tekken, and while this was fun for a while whenever my cousins were over, I found it really difficult as a kid, and I didn't really care for it all too much as a whole. So you can imagine the shock to my system when I jump from this... ...to this. That year, my adult stepbrother visited from out of town, and he brought his PS2, and he brought with him Bloody Roar 3. I think this was the first time I had ever even seen a PS2. Looking back, I'm not even sure I knew the PlayStation 2 existed before this. Anyway, the game just blew me away, even just watching him play it. Besides the obvious difference in graphical quality between this and Tekken 1, which was my only fighting game experience up until now, it was a lot of fun seeing something so fast-paced compared to how clunky Tekken felt. Even as a kid, I felt like I didn't really have any control over it, and I know I'm probably pissing off hardcore Tekken fans that really enjoy the game, but Bloody Roar 3 just felt so much more fluid and smooth to me, and I understood it. Well, I didn't completely understand it. My brother would hand my ass to me. But I felt like I could do what I wanted to do, even if I didn't completely understand how to do a combo or anything like that. But it's okay, because the game was a lot more easily controlled than something like Tekken where you have one face button for each limb on your character. The controls were a lot simpler and it made it more easy for me to enjoy as a kid. All you had is square to punch, X to kick, and circle to enter your beast form when your meter at the bottom is full. And the beast form thing is what really just caught my attention with the game, because otherwise it would have just been a prettier Tekken. But for whatever reason, the idea of turning into an awesome animal and fighting to the death, well, fighting to the knockout, was just really cool to me. Maybe it was because I was reading the Animorphs books when I was a kid back then too. I'm not really sure. But for whatever reason, it just grabbed me. And now, to this day, it's still something that's just nostalgic for me. It was kind of just a magic combination of getting to play games with a family member that I didn't get to see very often, being in the presence of this awesome new gaming system that I possibly didn't even know existed back then, and also just having something new and fun and exciting to play that just was unlike anything I had ever seen before. I remember my stepbrother mostly playing Sheena, and most of why I remember this is on account of him winning every fight, meaning I would hear a lot of You win! You can try again anytime. After which he'd simply add, anytime, casually glancing back at me. I don't know, it was just funny to me. Try as I might, I could never eke out a win, probably never even getting close, despite his polite reminders to block, cancel his specials when I saw them coming, and use Hyper Beast. <laughs> But it didn't matter. I was just having a blast playing the game. This was a long weekend where I spent pretty much all of the time playing this game. As my stepbrother would be out and about during the day, I got some valuable alone time with the game. Being born in 1994 and growing up with an N64 at my mom's house and a PS1 at my dad's house, I was too young to have witnessed the 3D revolution, and I hadn't really played any other systems other than these, so this was my first true next-gen experience, and simply being in the presence of the PS2 was exciting to me and playing this fast-paced, buttery smooth game just made it so much better. I could not be pulled away from it. Despite all my vivid memories about the first time playing this game, I'm not sure which fighter I played as for my very first fight, but I know that I quickly gravitated to Zeon, because he's, well, he's cool and edgy. You win. You win from me. And his beast form is even cooler. He's not really an animal like everybody else in the game, and I think that it's kind of a weird thing, but as a kid, didn't really matter. He was the coolest guy, that meant I was picking him. He's arguably the most unique from the starting roster, except maybe Stun, but I always found him to be really slow and not have much fun playing with him. Besides, everyone else in this game just turns into an animal, 
or an insect in Stun's case, but being an unborn is way cooler. What is an unborn besides a thinly veiled conservative talking point? Well, the game doesn't really explain, but he's obviously made out to be some kind of really comically evil bad guy who wants to consume the entire world. He's essentially trying to open a portal to release the rest of his kind into the world and take over. I don't really know why they didn't just decide to call him a demon. Maybe they were trying to play it straight to the Christian crowd who might be buying this game about superhumans with unnatural abilities with the sign of the beast. I don't know. It's kind of weird. Anyway, he looked cool. He has spikes all over him that look like lasers when he attacks. That was good enough for me. There wasn't much more that went into my consideration for a character when I was learning the game. I had hardly any idea what I was doing. Eventually playing on my own, I would figure out a little bit more about how to play different characters and what was effective. And although I still preferred Zeon's edgy design, I really connected with Bakuryu, Bakuryu, Buckaroo. I found playing as this guy really accessible and it just worked for me. He quickly became my main and although I was more successful with him, Zeon was still my favorite character, but I had fun going through arcade mode and actually winning for once. And although I had probably had to turn down the difficulty to do so, I had actually encountered the character Koryu before my stepbrother had ever even found him. It turned out that you had to get to stage 5 before you hit the 5 minute mark in the timer, and he hadn't done that yet for whatever reason. Maybe he just didn't play very often, I'm not really sure. But it was really interesting to run into him while playing as Buckaroo, because he actually has the same moveset, and I thought for a moment that it was actually just cloning my character and it would have done it with anybody. Turned out that that's just what the character is, and I later learned that this character is a clone of sorts. Not in the fighting game sense, but like actually a clone of another character from the first Bloody Roar game with the same name. But I didn't know about any of that at the time. It was just cool to have Mr. Robot Mole Man here and have another character with the same moveset that I had begun to understand, but in cool robot form. I ended up showing my stepbrother as he arrived home conveniently not long after doing this and he threw in the memory card to save the character, which was cool. I felt like I had done something convenient for him. It didn't last long though, unfortunately. Eventually he ended up taking off for that weekend and of course he took his PS2 with him, so that was the end of it for Bloody Roar 3 for me and it was back to good old PlayStation 1 low poly graphics and it was as if this had never happened. That would be the last time I would play this game for a very long time. But luckily, one Friday night looking to rent a game with my dad for the weekend, remember renting games, I came across Bloody Roar 2 for the PS1. And back then I remember being a little bit concerned that it wasn't going to be as good of an experience as Bloody Roar 3, since obviously it's not on the PlayStation 2, so it's not going to be as new and fresh and awesome. But as soon as I started it, my concerns were alleviated. So that totally sold me. It obviously wasn't as pretty as Bloody Roar 3, and it was a little bit clunkier and harder to control, but it was way more interesting than Tekken for me, and I was able to just jump in and start doing what I wanted to do because I had already learned a lot of these characters' moves. Unfortunately, my boy Zeon wasn't there anymore, but Buckaroo was there to pick up the slack. I had figured out how to play him pretty well at this point, so it was fun to be able to have something to fall back on. And as you can see, the game is also a lot bloodier than Bloody Roar 3. You would think that it would be a downgrade coming back from the newer game, but this game really delivered on that front. And so went another weekend of doing nothing but playing Bloody Roar, although this time again I'm on a timer because it's a rental. Not long after this though, I'd actually find the game in a local game store, come back later with the intention to buy it. I was actually planning to trade in my complete copy of Spyro the Dragon, and you gotta keep in mind, it's... It's not like I've got money to burn, I'm just a kid. I, I'm just coming in with the hope that trading in Spyro is going to give me enough to buy this game. Thankfully though, the game was only like $12 or something like that, so my dad actually just bought it for me and let me keep my Spyro game, which was nice. I ended up really appreciating that because it turned out to be a game that I really enjoyed and would develop a lot of nostalgia for as well. So anyway, I went home with Bloody Roar 2 and finally I had this game for myself 
and I could spend as much time with it as I wanted, which was awesome. I really didn't even care that the graphics weren't as good. I was enjoying that there was more blood in each of the beast attacks. It just made the game feel more visceral and intense and maybe a little bit more adult since I was a kid. I wanted to play something dark and edgy. Speaking of which, the only disappointment I had is that Xeon wasn't in the game, but whatever. At least I was still playing Bloody Roar. I would actually come to enjoy the game more than Bloody Roar 3, believe it or not. Part of it was because I kind of had to. It's not like I could play Bloody Roar 3 at any moment, so I might as well enjoy what I've got. But I actually found myself enjoying the music a lot more in this game, because every character has their own theme, which means there's more songs in general, rather than just having a song per stage. And there's also a fairly robust, at least for a fighting game, story mode, compared to Bloody Roar 3's arcade just having an intro and outro for each character. The story mode really impressed me back then, partly just because it's nice to have more content to play in general when you don't have a ton of games to play, back to what we were talking about in the beginning. But there's also a lot of value to be had in characterizing the characters. The story mode would show you each of the different characters' relationships, who they were friends with, who they were rivals with, and it would give you more of an investment in them as a personality, rather than just being an avatar that you are using merely to beat the crap out of each other. I guess part of why building the world and the story is cool to me is because the first person that I picked when I was playing Bloody Roar 3 wasn't anything about the mechanics, because I didn't know anything about it. I just picked the guy that looked cool. Similarly, here in Bloody Roar 2, I just wanted to see what each of these characters were up to. They all are pretty cool in their own way, and it was significantly more interesting than the minimal story that was present in Tekken 1. So all in all, it was just a lot going on to make me invested in this game, and it had a lot to offer for me. So, although it might have been an older game, it was still a ton of fun and it was something that I valued a lot. It even just seems like there was more love put into this game than Bloody Roar 3. It really makes you wonder why 3 didn't carry on to have a full-blown story mode like this game did. And there's a lot more hand-drawn artwork in this game that I think is really, really cool and I would have loved to see more of in the subsequent game. I would go on to play this game for a long time. I didn't get a PS2 until 6 or 7 years later, and then of course Bloody Roar 3 was one of the first games I picked up for it. Also, this was one of the first games I beat my stepbrother at, if not the first. I remember him visiting one day, once again from out of town, and we had sat down and played a little bit. And it was a very, very close game after several of him kicking my ass, as had always been the tradition. And I barely killed him by stepping on him when he was on the ground at one sliver of health left. And I remember him throwing his controller on the ground and jokingly walking out of the room like, Oh, god damn, I need to think about this. And my dad and I just laughed about it. So, there's a lot of memories I have with this game, and I just think it's fun. There's nothing quite like it out there, and I'm hoping one day we get another Bloody Roar game. Thanks for watching this little story about why I like Bloody Roar. If you thought this was interesting, or you want me to do another similar video, let me know. Otherwise, I'll probably just go back to posting Counter-Strike clips and not much else on this channel, but I just thought this would be something fun and interesting to try for once. So, let me know what you thought. Thanks for watching.